What does that even mean, Bowers Game Cornar? Ahoy there, YouTube! I'm back again today for another game review. Today, I'm very excited to check out Viceroy from Mayday Games. It's for one to four players, ages 13 plus, so think about 45 to 60 minutes to play. And in Viceroy, you are going to be. Uh, I don't know what you're doing. You're kind of spending gems to get guys and spending more gems to put guys on a pyramid and then you get the stuff that's on the pyramid and you're trying to score victory points. Woo! But there are literally tons and tons of ways to score different victory points as you go about your route of building your pyramid of power. Not much of a theme, but is it much of a game? Let's open it up. Check it out. Alright then, we're going to take a look at what you're going to get inside of Viceroy. So first and foremost, I do want to mention that I have some uh, some cool extra items that you won't be getting in the base game. i got the playmat here, which I, I really like a lot. And I also have some gems that uh, will replace uh, these uh, cardboard things right here. But other than that, everything you see here is the base game. So first and foremost, we got a handy dandy rule sheet. It's 12 pages, double-sided, full of pictures, illustrations, colors, examples. It's very, very well done, even though it will take you about 10, 15 minutes to fully understand what's going on. It's one of those games where you read the rule booklet and you're like, I think I have it, but then eventually you'll just get that moment where it just clicks and you'll be like, ah, oh, I get it. But other than that, the rule booklet is very well done. So in Viceroy, what you're going to be doing is you're going to be kind of bidding on these cards that are going to be out in front of you. These cards are going to go into a pyramid that you're going to have in front of you. And when you play a card into the pyramid, it's going to give you different special abilities. It might give you attack, it might give you defense, it might give you science or magic or gemstones, which will allow you to buy more things. Or there's law cards you can play down, which will have crazy awesome special abilities and they're free to play. There's tons of stuff going on here. Uh, so I'll go over the components and then I'll get a little bit into the game play. So first and foremost, you're going to get these gemstones right here. These gemstones are going to be important because these are how you are going to acquire different cards. When you start out the game, you're only going to have six of them. And what you're going to be doing is you're going to have cards out here. You're going to decide which of these cards you would like to acquire by placing that gemstone in your hand. So for instance, if you wanted this red one right here, you'd put your red gemstone in your hand secretly. Everybody would reveal at the same time. And then you would get this card unless someone else plays a red gemstone we'll get more into how that works in a couple of minutes but you're also going to use those red gemstones to purchase these cards and put them in front of you so for instance if you put this card on the first row of your pyramid you're going only going to need one green gemstone you just pay your gemstone and then boom you play it down and you get the special ability which in this case would give you four more gemstones so a no-brainer it's a great purchase now if you wanted to put it on the second level of your pyramid you would need to uh, pay a yellow and a green, but that would get you a card. Now, it doesn't get you both benefits, it just gets you that one right there. Third level, blue, yellow, and green. Fourth level, blue, blue, yellow, green. And if you can get to the fifth level, which is somewhat difficult to do, you can play two blues and then a third blue. So you play three blues, a yellow, and a green, which is a lot of gemstones. Uh, but needless to say, it's going to give you a really good reward. So that's where you're going to use the gemstones. You're going to have cards out here that you're going to be acquiring. Uh, so we have these cards right here, which are going to be put as part of your pyramid. And I also mentioned briefly that you're going to have law cards. And they'll give you really cool special abilities. So this one. Choose either to play a defense token on this card, to place six victory points on this card, or to place four gemstones of your choice uh, from the reserve to take four. So essentially, you play down this card and you're going to get some special ability that's going to help you out. We'll take a look at a couple more of them. Uh, this one. Put one free card from your pyramid underneath this card. Move all tokens, if any, from the free card under this card at the end of the game. Uh, depending on what level it is, it's going to score you more points. So if you put this on the fourth level, boom, that's 12 points. That's, that's a good deal of points. We'll look at one more so you can get a feel. But they're, they're all drastically different, too. At the end of the game, to gain two points for each adjacent character card. Up to six cards could be adjacent to a single card. So you wouldn't want to put this on the top or the bottom. You want to ploop, ploop, place this down in the middle. And that would be... So the law cards are generally going to get your victory points in one way, shape, or form. Next, you're going to have tokens, tokens, and more tokens. And there's a couple different tokens. There's attack tokens right here, which will give people negative points at the end of the game. And these are double-sided, I do want to mention. There's defense tokens, which will block people from uh, taking those points at the end of the game. There are what are called uh, science tokens right here, which will let you draw more gemstones if you decide to pass. Because as I mentioned, what you're going to be doing is you're going to be playing out so for instance if i wanted the blue one i would lay out my hand and boom i would hopefully get the blue one however you can also pass and put nothing in your hand and normally you would get a set amount
amount of gemstones. However, if you have a bunch of these guys laying around, then you're going to get more gemstones, potentially to the point where maybe it'd be more advantageous to you in certain situations to just pass so you can get a boatload of gemstones. I've never tried that strategy, but hey, there's a lot of strategies in this game. Next, you're going to get these scrolls right here. These are science, and much in the way they are in like Seven Wonders and some other games, science really isn't going to do too much for you during the game, but at the end of the game, you can score a lot of points with science. So you're going to have those tokens over there, and you'll get those by laying down cards in different rows. We'll, we'll, I'll give you a, a mock hand so you can see exactly how all this works in a couple minutes. So next you're going to have more tokens over here. These ones are just straight victory points. Uh, you just put them on your token and boom, you get victory points at the end of the game. But there's also a couple more over here that will score you some unique points. So you're going to have these ones right here. Now these ones are a little bit tricky to explain this early on, but needless to say, these are going to score you points in a couple different ways. Essentially, uh, when you're building your pyramid, you're also going to have the option, if you can, to make circles. So let's say we put these two down here, and then we put this guy right here. Well then, boom, we have made a completed yellow circle. So we're instantly going to gain a yellow gem, but in addition to that, at the end of the game, if we also had this guy right here, we're going to score an additional two points, in addition to the one point that you'd get since this is on the first row. If this is on the fourth row, you'd score four points, so you'd score six points. Uh, also, these are going to give you points for what are called infinite gemstone spots on the cards. Uh, and oh, this is a perfect example right here. So if I built this one on the third level, this means I have one yellow gemstone. I always will have one yellow gemstone when I am building. Not when I'm purchasing, but when I'm building. It's a very useful card. Uh, but if I have this, it's going to get me extra points pertaining to that. So these guys will give you extra points in a couple different ways. Uh, as you can see right here, these are going to make science scrolls more points. So normally if you had one of these and one science scroll, it'd be worth two points at the end of the game. Now each science scroll is worth four points at the end of the game. Now it's worth six points at the end of the game. So as you can see, acquiring these can really rack up a lot of points. So those are all the components. Let's get a little bit into the game plan. I'll show you what's going on. Oh, I also forgot to mention we have your playmat because you're going to want to hide your gemstones in front of you. And I do want to say uh, that the text on the playmat is extremely helpful. It has a lot of stuff on here that you're going to need to know. As you can see, uh, it'll tell you all the different symbology and whatnot. So that's very, very useful. Even though these are not the nicest playmats because if you just like laugh, they will fall over. Uh, but it's not a huge deal. So, when you start the game, you're going to have a set amount of gemstones. It's going to be six. And then you're going to also have a random wealth. You'll get to pick a card and play it down in front of you and get that reward. So, for instance, if I played this one in front of me, it's going to give me three gemstones. So, I pick out whichever three gemstones I want, along with my six that I started with, which was just going to be ten that I have back here. I would now be ready to play. Also, when you start the game, you're going to start off with three law cards. And you can play those uh, when, it's, when it's a good idea to play those. In addition, you'll have one card in your hand to start off with, and you'll discard two cards. So we're going to pretend this is the first round of the game, and I'm sitting right here. I'm like, okay, I got this. I got plenty of gemstones, and I'm going to look out of the board and decide what I want to do. So for me personally, I think I would really like to try and focus on getting these yellow gems right here. So you know what? I kind of like this one, and I kind of like that one. So I think... I will probably go for this one, so I'd put a blue gemstone out in front of me. Everyone else would do the same, and we would reveal. Now, if no one else put out the same color as you, then you instantly get that card. You just spend that gemstone, and you would grab your card. However, let's pretend that maybe we put out green, and then someone else also put out green. Neither of us get that card right now, and we go to what is called a second auction. Now, everybody else acquires their card, but we now have to play like this kind of game of chicken, where maybe we negotiate. We say, all right, you take that, and then I'll take this, and maybe we can work something out. Or you might be stubborn. You might say, I'm going to take green. You better switch, or you're not going to get anything. Well, you'll get some gemstones, but you won't get a card. Uh, there's kind of a free-form negotiation aspect right there. Now, I'm not sure if it's in the rules, but we actually do something when we play that I like a lot, which is where we'll say, oh, I'll give you this color gem if you switch to a different gem because I really want that card, so on and so forth. But needless to say, if nobody else takes a different card, then bloop, that goes to the top like that, and then you have an opportunity to play uh, as many of your cards as you want, up to three of them, and you can pay the different total to do that. So I might play this one right here, and since it's on the second row, I would get the second benefit. Now I'm going to go through all the different symbols on the cards, and then I'm going to try and wrap it up so you can see what's going on here. So for instance, if I built this on the fourth row all the way on the top, I would get 
two scrolls. Uh, if I put it right here, I'd get a scroll plus three. If I put it right here, I would get a, uh, not a science, yeah, that is a science. And if I put it there, I'd get three gemstones. That's what all those symbols mean. So let's see. This one means you get to draw a card of your choice. It can either be a, uh, a card like this or a law card, which can be very, very useful. That one's going to give me a defense and four gemstones. That's pretty dang good. Uh, let's see, anything else I want to see here? Uh, those are the Infinity Gemstones, which means that uh, you're going to have one blue in play at all times, and you can really kind of focus on those too, which is great. As you can see, there's also some really nice artwork here, even though I don't think they particularly fit the theme of the game, which is kind of a non-existent theme. But anywho, you're going to continue to do this until the cards run out, at which point you will tally up points at the end of the game, and I'll go over how you score points at the end of the game, because there are a lot of them. There are lots of different ways to score points in the game. So uh, when you make a complete color of something, so let's say we have red and red, and or you remember this guy right here we talked about, you can score points doing that. Also, if you have infinite gemstones, uh, the, the infinite gemstone symbol, you're going to score points for that. Your law cards are going to score you points. You're going to have points that just get from acquiring like that. That's just seven points. You tally up those. You'll have magic tokens. You'll have to figure out how you're going to do magic tokens. You can get complete sets where you have a magic and a science, and a defense. If you get that, you get 12 points. So you could try and have a very balanced portfolio. Or, what's also going to happen is you're going to lose points based on how many swords other people have, based on your defense. But you're going to tally up all those different points, and at the end of the thing, you're going to see who scored the most points, and whoever scores the most points is going to be the winner of Viceroy. And that, in a crazy jumbled nutshell, is how the game is played. Alrighty then, Viceroy from Mayday Games, where my fellow of let's go with the pros, let's go with the cons. First on the con side, the game's not going to be for everybody for a variety of different reasons. It's one to four players, which is an extremely limited player count. Also, solo, the game is not good. It's just not fun. I like a lot of solo games. I will never play this game solo again. I played it twice, and I hate it. I'll go as far as to say I hated this game solo. Uh, there's two big reasons why. First, this game has a good deal of negotiation and confrontation sometimes, and I like that aspect of the game a lot. And when you play solo, that just kind of strips strips away. Now, they do have a mechanism where, like, you draw a gem out of the box and you, you do the colors for the auctions. I didn't like that at all. Uh, another big con that I had on the solo is that because you're playing solo, the swords and the shields kind of fall to the wayside as well because they can be a big part of a game, especially if someone has a lot of swords. Now, obviously, in a solo game, you're just not going to get that experience and that vibe. So solo, not good. Another con that I have in this game is you're going to do the same thing over and over and over and over and over again for 12 rounds, and then someone's going to win. Uh, that's going to turn off some people. Didn't particularly bug me, but it will turn off some people, I would imagine. Uh, another con I have, this is a component con, is that uh, the little cheat sheet that you get that hides your gems, uh, while it does have a lot of information, which is great, they're very, very flimsy. So if you just laugh like too hard, like, ha, and breathe too hard on it, it's going to flip over, which doesn't sound like a big deal, but if you only have like two or three gems, it can be a really big deal. Like if somebody sees you only have two blue gems and a green gem, they can really potentially really screw you over. Um, last con I have with this game is that two players versus four players is going to feel drastically different. It doesn't personally bug me, but it feels like it's got a little bit of a, like a Ticket to Ride-esque vibe, and where when you play two players, it's going to be, you're pretty much just trying to maximize. You're, gonna, you're not going to butt heads or confront each other too much because there's going to be tons of cards to pick from. You're normally going to have six cards to pick from. So you can generally get what you want. Whereas in a four-player game, there's going to be lots of confrontation and negotiation and ties and then second auctions and third auctions. And third auctions can get really tense, especially if you're playing like a game of chicken. Um, so needless to say, two versus four players is going to play different. And that's what I got on the con side. So moving on to the pros, I was not quite sure what to expect. The box cover does not excite me. The name bores me. One to four players scares me, because I normally like something that at least plays five. But Viceroy is fan-freaking-tastic. If you routinely play with four players, get this game. It's that simple. Viceroy is outstanding. What do I like about this game? First and foremost, it says 45 to 60 minutes. It plays in 45 to 60 minutes, but it feels so much meatier than 45 to 60 minutes because you have a lot of choices in front of you, and that's because of how great the cards are. There's only two kinds of cards in this game, but the law cards are outstanding. Each one feels different. It has its own cool powers, or it's going to score you tons of victory points, and I like that a lot. I, I like the fact that none of the law cards 
feel useless most of the time. Like, you're not going to get a law card and be like, oh, this is garbage, I can't use this. Uh, because you get some of that in some games. It's just not fun. And when you acquire a special card, you want it to be special! And in this game, they are. In fact, I have one particular story about one of the cards in the game, which I love. It won me, well, the only game that I've won of this so far. But it gave you an extra round to play the game. It normally played 12 rounds. But that's such a wild card move, like the end of the games when we get to the 12th round we run out of cards and nobody expected the 13th round but i was prepared for the 13th round and i was able to just load up and get exactly the card i want because everybody else spent their gemstones but either say that's just an example of how cool the law cards are moving on to the noble cards or the, the viceroy cards or whatever the heck those other cards are called those are really cool as well because there's so much to take in on those cards the first row the second row the third row the fourth row the colors what it's going to cost you to play it there's a lot of information on those cards there's a lot to think about and the higher your pyramid gets the more you really need to think about your auctions like the first couple rounds when you auction it's like oh i want that card i want that card i want one of those two cards but then when you get to the third and fourth round you're like oh man uh, the third and fourth row you're like man i really like that Ooh, i like that fourth row ability I'm like, Ooh, i like this Ooh, and the decisions get tougher Another thing I liked about this game was there are numerous paths to victory, and I like that a lot. I'm really excited to explore more of the different paths to victory. So you can focus on particular colors or infinite gemstones or focus on science or focusing on magic. Uh, you can focus on attacking people or trying to collect the sets, which at the same time is going to give you defense. You know, there's just so many different ways to score points in this game, and I like that an awful lot. I mean... This game is really good. Completely caught me off guard. Viceroy from Mayday Games. If you routinely play four-player games, absolutely check this out. It plays good with two, great with three, absolutely outstanding with four. That is Viceroy from Mayday Games. Go ahead, check this one out. It, unless you're playing it solo, it's definitely worth your time. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to click on the subscribe button down below. And in the comments below, let me know why you think game companies pick the most boring themes ever. Viceroy? What does that even mean? Call it goldfish. Just have a really nicely painted goldfish on the front. And you're acquiring legions of other goldfish. You have goldfish with like machine guns and a goldfish with a sword. That would be way more interesting than this theme. But needless to say, it's still a fantastic game. But post in the comments below, why do you think there's so many god-awful themes in our hobby? I mean, really, there's not that many in other hobbies. Like, you don't see video game. Well, I guess you do. Anywho, I'm done. Expected more? I'm done. Go! Go! Seriously, I'm just walking over to turn off the camera. Can you, will you please leave? I need you to get out. That was the review for Viceroy. For more reviews and previews, check back at Bowers Game Corner.